There are very strict laws about food safety in the UK, and breaking them can lead to legal action, which in turn can lead to prosecution, heavy fines, bad publicity, loss of customers, and in some instances, closure of the business. Food safety is everybody's business, and to ensure customers do not become seriously ill, food safety officers regularly inspect local food businesses to see if they're complying with the current laws and working to prepare and sell food which is safe to eat. Food safety officers do not require an appointment, and they can arrive unannounced at any time and as often as they feel is necessary. And when they do arrive, their inspection will focus on four key areas. Cleaning, cooking, chilling, and cross-contamination. By drawing your attention to the safety requirements relating to each of the four key areas, we hope this short video will help you to gain a much clearer understanding of what you need to do to work more safely when handling food. It's very important that you recognize that there are two kinds of dirt. The dirt you can see and bacteria, which is so small it can only be seen through a microscope. To help stop bacteria moving around the kitchen and onto food, you must keep to a high standard of personal hygiene. You should always bathe or shower before coming to work. All personal coats and jackets should be kept outside the areas where food is prepared or stored. Clean overalls or suitable work clothing should always be provided at the start of every shift to let you change out of your normal clothes. Hats and hairnets should always be worn. All your jewellery, including watches, should be removed before working with food and all cuts and sores should be covered with blue-coloured waterproof dressings. Also, if you're feeling unwell, it's important that you never come into direct contact with food. You must tell your boss, who must stop you working with food, until you're better. Since a quick rinse under the tap will not destroy bacteria, you should always wash both hands thoroughly. They should always be washed to above the wrists, and always in a full basin of warm water using soap and a clean nail brush. Your hands should be washed regularly and always before handling cooked and ready to eat food, after handling raw food, after using cleaning chemicals, after using the toilet, after making contact with dirty items such as waste bins, and after coughing or sneezing. The wash hand basin should always have soap, a nail brush, and paper towels. And since bacteria prefer wet hands, and can be easily spread via shared fabric towels, you should always use disposable paper towels and always ensure your hands are totally dry. Food safety officers begin an inspection by assessing the general cleanliness of all the work surfaces and equipment that come into direct contact with food. They also pay particular attention to the numerous hand contact points, such as door handles and edges, wall corners, light and wall switches, equipment knobs and controls, refrigerator and microwave door handles, and taps on sinks and hand basins. Remember, even when a surface or a piece of equipment looks clean, it can still carry enough bacteria to cause serious food poisoning. But illness is less likely to occur if you adopt a clean-as-you-go policy and ensure that all surfaces and equipment related to food preparation are cleaned regularly using fresh cloths and the correct bactericidal cleaning chemicals which kill bacteria. Temperature control is very important as bacteria do not like extreme conditions. In fact, bacteria will slow down and even stop growing if the temperature drops enough and they will die if it rises very high. This means that food should always be kept either very hot or very cold, that food should always be piping hot after cooking or reheating, and that cooked food should always be kept piping hot until it's used. Food safety officers will always look at how well food temperatures are being measured and controlled. The most effective way to measure the temperature of food is to use a probe thermometer. The thermometer should always be cleaned before and after use. 
And you should always remember to make sure the numbers have stopped changing before taking a reading. To check the temperature properly, the probe should be put into the thickest part of the food rather than the surrounding sauce. Also, since large pans can have cold spots, you need to stir food well during cooking and before taking its temperature. It's also recommended good practice to keep a record of regular daily temperature readings. There are three important temperatures to remember with hot food. First, fresh food being cooked for the first time should always be heated to more than 75 degrees centigrade. Second, food that has been cooked, allowed to cool and then cooked again must reach at least 82 degrees centigrade. And third, food being kept hot for service must always be kept above 63 degrees centigrade. Bacteria will multiply rapidly if large quantities of food are removed from the refrigerator and left lying for long periods. This means you should only ever remove as much food as you can prepare at any one time. It's also important that hot food is always cooled quickly. For example, food cooked in large pans should always be spread out on a shallow tray or in smaller containers to allow heat to escape faster. Also, cooked food should never be left to cool overnight. It should be cool enough to go into the fridge or freezer within two hours of being cooked. And all food stored in the refrigerator should be covered or put into sealed containers. And frozen food should be defrosted in the fridge. There are two important temperatures to remember with cold food. First, food in a fridge should be kept at five degrees centigrade or colder. And second, food in a freezer should be kept colder than minus 18 degrees centigrade. Harmful bacteria getting passed from raw food to cooked food is known as cross-contamination. Although cross-contamination is one of the most common causes of food poisoning, if you adopt the following common sense procedures, it can easily be avoided. Cooked and raw food should always be kept apart and handled separately. And hands must always be washed between handling raw and cooked food. Cooked and raw food should always be stored separately. And when there's only one refrigerator, raw food should be stored below cooked food. Also, food should be stored in proper food containers with separate ones for raw and cooked food. Implements such as knives should never come in contact with both cooked or raw food without first ensuring they've been thoroughly cleaned with the correct chemicals. It's much safer to have separate knives and work tools for raw and cooked foods. Also, separate areas should always be used to prepare cooked and raw food. And separate cloths should always be used to clean these areas. In fact, food safety officers recommend using disposable paper wipes as they totally eliminate one of the main ways in which bacteria get transported around the kitchen. So there you have it. Four simple steps to help you work safely with food. If you remember the importance of cleaning, cooking, chilling and cross-contamination, then you'll have nothing to worry about, and neither will your customers. To get more information about food safety, speak to your boss or the food safety officer who inspects your business. They'll be able to find a training course which is suitable for you. Remember, food safety is everybody's business, including yours. Ying 
，同埋佢哋預備同售賣嘅食物係咪安全？食物衛生官員無需預約，可以隨時突擊到訪。如果佢哋認為有需要，仲可以成日嚟巡查添。食物衛生官員到訪嘅時候，佢哋會集中喺四個主要範圍：清潔、烹調、冷藏同交叉污染。通過特別提及呢四個主要範圍嘅安全準則，我哋希望呢段短短嘅影片可以幫到你更明白你需要點樣做，先至會安全咁處理食物。你要知道污糟嘢係有分兩種，第一種係你肉眼可以睇到嘅污糟嘢，第二種係細到要用顯微鏡先至可以睇到嘅細菌。要阻止細菌喺廚房裏面散播同埋走落食物嗰度，你一定要保持高水準嘅個人衛生。你應該喺每日翻工之前沖涼。所有個人嘅外套或者大褸應該存放喺預備或者儲藏食物嘅地方以外。你嘅僱主應該為你提供乾淨同埋合適嘅廚房工衣，等你可以喺每日翻工之前更換。仲應該帶住廚師帽同埋髮網。喺處理食物之前，你應該將你所有嘅手飾除落嚟，包括手錶。所有嘅傷口應該用藍色嘅防水膠布黏住。仲有，如果你覺得唔舒服，你絕對唔應該同食物有直接接觸。你一定要話俾你嘅老闆知你唔舒服，而佢就一定要喺你好翻之前唔俾你處理食物。試恩就咁用水沖下對手，係唔會毀滅細菌。所以你應該成日都徹底清洗雙手，洗手應該要洗埋手碗，將洗手盤裝滿暖水，用簡易同埋乾淨嘅指甲刷嚟洗手。你應該周不時去洗手，而且一定要喺處理即食嘅熟食物之前洗手。喺處理生食物之後，用完化學清潔劑之後，去完廁所之後，接觸污糟嘢之後，例如垃圾桶。同埋咳同埋打乞嗤之後要洗手，洗手盤一定要有簡易、指甲刷同埋抹手嘅紙巾，因為細菌比較容易喺濕嘅手繁殖，又容易通過共用嘅毛巾傳播，所以你應該用一啲用完就抌嘅紙巾，仲要記住將雙手完全抹乾。食物衛生官員喺巡查嘅開始，會檢查所有同食物有直接接觸嘅工作台面同埋器具嘅一般清潔。佢哋仲會特別留意多個手接觸到嘅地方，例如門柄同埋門邊、牆角、燈掣同其他開關掣、器具嘅按鈕、雪櫃同微波爐嘅門柄、星盤同洗手盤嘅水龍頭等等。你要記住。就算一啲表面或者器具睇落去係乾淨，佢哋仍然可能有足夠嘅細菌去引致嚴重嘅食物中毒。如果你採用一個一邊做嘢一邊清潔嘅政策，同確保定時用乾淨嘅布同埋正確嘅殺菌清潔劑去清潔所有處理食物嘅台面同埋器具，食物中毒發生嘅可能性就會減低。因為細菌唔中意極端嘅温度，所以温度控制係特別重要。如果温度下降，細菌嘅繁殖會減慢；極低嘅温度仲會令細菌停止生長。如果温度上升到好高，細菌就會開始死亡。呢、这個意思係食物應該儲藏喺好熱或者好凍嘅温度。喺煮熟或者翻熱之後，食物應該係要熱辣辣嘅，同埋煮熟嘅熟食物。應該喺食用之前保持熱辣辣。食物衛生官員一定會檢查你點樣測量同埋控制食物温度。測量食物温度最有效嘅方法係用插針温度計。插針温度計應該喺用之前同之後被清潔。另外，你要記住要等到温度計嘅數字唔再上升嘅時候，先至記錄温度。正確嘅測量温度方法係將插針插入食物最厚嘅地方，而唔係插入周圍嘅汁液。大型嘅煲鍋會有所謂嘅凍點，所以你喺烹調嘅時候同埋測量温度之前，要將食物攪勻。
我哋推薦你每日抽氧記錄測量嘅温度。你要記住，熱食物有三個重要嘅温度。第一，新鮮食物第一次由生煮到熟，應該要煮到攝氏七十五度以上。第二，已經煮熟嘅食物攤凍咗之後再翻熱，一定要翻熱到攝氏八十二度以上。第三，保温嘅食物就一定要保持喺摄氏六十三度以上。如果你喺雪柜拎大量食物出嚟，放喺室温一段好长时间，细菌就会迅速滋生。呢、这个意思系你只应该拎出你当时能够处理嘅食物。仲有，将煮熟嘅热食物快速摊冻系好重要嘅。例如大煲嘅熟食物，應該放喺淺身嘅兜或者細嘅容器裏面嚟攤凍，等啲熱氣快啲散去。熟食物係絕對唔應該喺室温攤過嘢。食物應該喺煮熟嘅兩個鐘頭以內攤到夠凍，放入雪櫃。另外，所有儲存喺雪櫃嘅食物，應該要封好或者放入有蓋嘅盒。雪藏嘅食物應該放喺雪櫃裏面融雪。你要記住兩個冷藏食物嘅温度。第一，儲存喺雪櫃嘅食物應該保持喺攝氏五度以下。第二，喺冰櫃嘅食物應該保持喺攝氏零下十八度以下。有害嘅細菌由生食物傳播到熟食物，就叫做交叉污染。交叉污染係食物中毒最常見嘅成因之一，但係如果你採用以下嘅常識做法，交叉污染就好容易避免。生同熟嘅食物應該完全分開，無論係儲藏或者係處理。喺處理生食物之後同熟食物之前，仲一定要洗手。生同熟嘅食物要分開儲藏。如果你只有一個雪櫃，咁樣生嘅食物就應該放喺熟嘅食物下面。另外，食物應該存放喺適當嘅食物容器裏面，而容器亦要分開生同熟。好似刀呢啲器具係絕對唔應該。